I'm trying not to be sort of a, whatever, scaremonger or something, but when you're talking about having something that is an intelligence far in excess of the smartest human on earth, you have to say, at that point, who's in charge? Is it the computers or the humans? Hey, y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. Elon Musk and Benjamin Netanyahu, who is the Prime Minister of Israel, had a really interesting one-on-one conversation today, and then they did a roundtable with the co-founder of OpenAI and a researcher at MIT, very famous figures. So stay tuned for that for sure, and subscribe if you haven't done that already, so you get notified when that video comes out. But anyway, today I wanted to focus on the approximately 36-minute conversation between Elon and Benjamin. So the conversation started fairly rapidly with Elon talking about how technologically it's been basically a wall since the Industrial Revolution. In other words, we've had the progress like this for all of human history, and then it's just gone vroom, and it's gone basically vertical in the last couple of hundred years, and AI is the latest incarnation of that, and it's going even faster than the previous revolutions. And of course, that's what brought Elon to the opening remark that I played for you already about when AI is vastly smarter than the smartest human, who is actually in charge? And speaking of that, Elon next goes on to talk about the ratio of biological to silicon compute. In other words, the ratio of the number of human brains on the planet, which is, you know, around the 8 billion mark, more or less, to the amount of compute that we have on the planet at this point. And he says that humans are not expanding all that rapidly right now, and that makes sense, birth rate problems and all that stuff aside, we're more or less steady state. We're growing, but it's not that radically quickly. Whereas compute power is growing basically exponentially right now, not just in the capability of the compute each chip, but also just in the number of chips that we have available on the planet. And so Elon says in a short amount of time, biological compute will actually be a small fraction of the amount of compute on the planet. You know, there's some interesting ratios that I think are are quite profound, like one of them being the ratio of digital to biological compute. So if you take also the, all the human brains and then all the, the computer circuits and you say, what's that ratio? The ratio of digital to biological compute is increasing dramatically every year because the population of Earth is fairly static, but the output of silicon is dramatically increased. So at basically at a certain point with the percentage of compute that will be biological is very small. Next, Netanyahu turns to the idea of the age of abundance and the idea of a blessing and a curse, that we have this blessing of AI, which may lead to an age of abundance where everyone, you know, the rising tide lifts all boats, that kind of a thing. But the curse is, and he's very much a politician, he talks about the end of democracy, he talks about the end of governments and things like that. Uh, Obviously, he thinks in that particular way, Elon thinks more about businesses and so forth. I think more about personal matters. It's just our, our own perspective. And just as a quick tangent, I must say how impressed I am with Netanyahu. Yahoo's, you know, wide read knowledge, his understanding, his ability to think deeply about these things, even in a public forum like this, which is not the best place in the world for that kind of conversation, it's still really impressive and a refreshing difference from the politicians that I generally see in the United States. So of course, that's not an endorsement of him. I, I don't know his policies honestly well enough to be able to make a good judgment about that. I'm just saying as a person, he comes across very intelligent and very thoughtful and very well read, which I appreciate. But then Netanyahu actually focuses on the amount of time we actually have before he kind of dances around the term singularity, but the AI, the AGI singularity, the place where computers become more intelligent and then significantly more intelligent than human beings. And the fact that we just don't have that much time before this is going to happen. Of course, nobody knows when it's going to happen, but they talk about how Ray Kurzweil actually is really, really good at predicting this stuff. And he predicted the singularity would be in 2029, and we're not that far away. from it at this point. And then they start talking about bad actors. And speaking of bad actors, did you know that according to the 2022 annual data breach report by the Identity Theft Resource Center, the number of data breach victims was up over 41% in 2021, and it keeps on rising. Did you know that data brokers gather information about all of us, including our addresses, birthdays, and even our social security numbers? I've personally been involved in at least four major data breaches, and those are just the ones I know about. This is obviously a critical problem, but what can any of us mere mortals do? Enter Incogni, a service that will take on data brokers head-on for you and get you off lists and keep you off. If you tried to do this yourself, it would be a full-time job and still you'd probably miss a bunch of the data brokers. But how hard is it to use Incogni? Super easy actually. You sign up, you give them permission to work for you, 
and you sit back and relax. Incogni takes care of the rest and even shows you your progress so you know which data brokers have removed you and who they are. I had no idea I was personally on 76 data broker lists. Yikes. After using Incogni, I feel so much safer than I did before. Incogni also removes you from people search lists, which can be abused by bad actors to find out where you live and other personal details that none of us want shared. So what are you waiting for? Go to incogni.com slash knowitall or click the link in the description and get 60% off and get Incogni working for you today. Thanks to Incogni for sponsoring today's video. Be sure to check out my link, save 60% and get Incogni working for you today. And now let's get back to it. But then you have the third problem, which I think is the most difficult one. What do you do about what they call bad actors, which is a laundered way of saying rogue states, crime syndicates, runaway corporations? How about runaway individuals? I mean, like, remember the James Bond movie where you see the guy in some island and he's manufacturing this, the specter argument you have? But to do that, you need computation, you need big data, and you need basically algorithms and very able people. Could we trace that? Could we control that? So as you can hear here, Netanyahu is very concerned about these bad actors, these rogue actors, not as much governments. He does talk about that separately, but he says governments can more or less be balanced out because there's this mutually assured chaos, as he calls it. But he's very worried about individual bad actors. Elon's response to this is very interesting. That's, that's a great question. And I think the answer with respect to digital superintelligence is yes, because, you know, yeah, the, although like if you see a movie like, say, Terminator, the, you, know, it, you see the intelligence appears to be in the robot, but actually the intelligence is in large data centers, large server centers. So think of it more like if you see some of these data centers, you just see computers, like you can practically see the computer, yeah, that's how long the corridors are. I mean, these gigantic, massive warehouses or buildings with, in, in some cases, hundreds of thousands of computers. The for extreme digital superintelligence, that's the that that's it's not subtle. So it's not someone in barriers. A, what you're saying is there are barriers to entry that will be difficult to overcome. What, I, what I'm saying is that you'll be able to see the you know if you have an infrared camera from space, you'll be able to see whether it's, it's traceable. Located. You can so, actually identify it. Yes, because if you've got a sort of say a hundred megawatt no. uh, data center, uh, that you're going to have a hundred megawatts of heat rise uh, heat column. So in infrared, this will show up like. You know, it won't be subtle. It's, it's not very, a drug dealer. Clear. It's not it's a drug dealer in the Amazon <laughs> who's doing this. Yeah. No, it's hard to hide a giant server center. So as you hear there, Elon is talking about the biggest players. That would be Google, OpenAI, actually Tesla as well, XAI, et cetera, et cetera. We're looking at a relatively small group of players, and they have these gigantic data centers that are very, very easy to spot, even from space if you're trying to hide it, because they have a massive heat signature. They also require huge amounts of power. So these are things that he's saying like the very, very top end players are relatively easy to spot and to control through regulation because you can see them, they can't hide very easily. You can't just hide it in your basement. Now I can do my own AI research here all I want to, but I can only do it on a very, very small scale. And I agree with Elon Musk for the near term future. I don't know so much about the far term future because of course, compute just keeps getting better. The algorithms get better. These AIs get, keep getting better. So, you know, we might get to a point eventually where a server rack that, you, that can fit in your basement or something would be fine to run a cutting edge AI network. But right now, at least we're talking about gigantic data centers that cost huge amounts of money, hundreds of millions of dollars. They require megawatts of power. They're obvious that you could see them from space because of thermal imaging and stuff like that. So they would be very difficult to hide. And that's why he says that he doesn't believe this regulation would be as difficult, especially against bad actors, as people might think. Because just like with nuclear weapons, where you know, you'd have satellites going overhead, and you're checking on who's doing what, and making sure that everybody's playing nice, you can do the same thing with these gigantic data centers. In fact, it's even easier because you can't put those on a truck and drive them around. They're pretty much stuck. Once you build it, it's there, and it's going to operate there. So it's very easy to see where these things are and to then deal with people who are, might not be behaving correctly about their AI research. So again, while in the longer term, I'm not so sure about this, in the shorter term, I totally agree with Elon, and I think this is a great idea and a way to mitigate the risk of bad actors. 
And along those lines, Elon responds to criticisms that folks out there, including I, have stated about the idea of AI regulation. They sort of dance around that issue. But the issue, of course, that most people think about is China and the fact that China might not want to regulate things so that they can jump ahead of other people in terms of AI research and everything. If the the you know the other part of the world, the, the Western world, quote unquote, decides to regulate too strongly that China might jump ahead. And Elon says that he has some very clear evidence from visiting and talking to the CCP and others that they have a very vested interest in making sure that that doesn't happen either and that they're also interested in regulating things. So this, you know, generally is to the good, again, assuming that you can trust people when they say things like this. One of the things you know about politicians is you never quite trust whether they're speaking the truth or not to you. But in general, if we can find a way to regulate and to bring everyone together to push in the same direction, hopefully what that will do is that will produce the blessing end of what Benjamin Netanyahu was talking about rather than the curse end. In other words, it will bring the age of abundance, the age of, you know, long life, the age of ability to be able to do what you want to and not worry about basic things rather than the curse of either being wiped out or being subservient to the AI. Next, Elon discusses the spectrum of AI, just like I was talking about everything from me, you know, just doing individual research on a single computer, all the way up to these giant data clusters. And he gets a dig in at the iPhone's autocorrect features, which by the way, is very, very warranted. It's one of the most frustrating things in the world to type on this thing and have the autocorrect be as poor as it is in the day of really, really good AI and auto completion that should be available by now. You should really think of AI as a spectrum, like a very wide range of simple AI that will do, you know, automatic calendaring or something. In fact, one thing would be much appreciated is if we could apply a better AI for uh, autocorrect on uh, my phone, because that would be a great benefit. <laughs> if AI is so great, why is autocorrect to suck? You know, anyway, but, but there's, very, there's varying degrees of, auto, of AI that, that go from doing simple functions to levels of intelligence that I think are hard for us to comprehend as individuals. And at the very high level, the one that that's at least understandable requires massive amount of power, large number of computers and the right software and the right data and everything. So it's not, it's something you'd notice. It's not, you can't, difficult to hide. So sort of similar to uranium, you can sort of detect the uranium radiation, you know. Next, as might be expected these days, the two turn to talking about hate speech, about anti-Semitism and things like that. And Elon is very adamant about the fact that he is against anyone attacking anyone else. He says that that's something that will cause humanity to unravel, you know, civilization to unravel. It will reduce our chances of becoming multi-planetary. And he's very, very much against all of that. I'm sort of against uh, attacking any group, you know, doesn't matter who it is. I'm, you know, this is. I'm, I'm in favor of that, which further civilization and which ultimately leads us to become a space-bearing civilization, and uh, where we understand the nature of the universe. So we can't do that if there's a lot of, you know, infighting and, you know, and hatred and negativity. So, you know, I, obviously I'm against anti-Semitism. I'm against anti really anything that is, you know, that promotes hate and conflict. And I'm in favor of that, which helps build society and take us to a better future for humanity collectively. So, and, and now this was, is this like, and I, and I think one can actually argue that really everyone should have this view. The, all, it, all it requires is long-term thinking. So while some might not agree with this as the best possible answer to this, I actually think it's a pretty good answer. It's basically civilization itself depends on us trying to be as compassionate with each other as we can be. Don't attack other people. Don't attack other groups. Try to get behind and, you know, lift <laughs> the rising tide lifts all boats. It's a good metaphor. And hopefully what that will do is allow us to become a multiplanetary species eventually and to, you know, get off this third rock from the sun, carry the light of consciousness out there and carry a good compassionate light of consciousness. So I think this is a reasonably good answer, even though I'm sure a lot of people will not agree with it.
Netanyahu then turns back again to this idea of not much time. He's like, we don't have much time. We don't have much time. This is all happening very, very quickly. I, I tend to agree with him that this is happening a lot more quickly than I thought it was going to be a couple of years ago, certainly. But it seems like it is a gathering storm that is coming. And we really do. Oh, wow, that was a Terminator reference, wasn't it? <laughs> anyway, it's a gathering storm that's coming, but we had better be ready for it. The singularity is going to be that place. It's a nexus where you don't know what comes out the other end. And, and we had better guide it and try to make it the best outcome possible. And so hopefully, as Netanyahu says, this will be a blessing in our lives. This will be the biggest blessing of our lives, not the biggest curse of our lives. And then finally, they turn to influences in their lives. And unsurprisingly, Elon says that Douglas Adams, that's his biggest influence on his life. Of course, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy and the series of books. Very, very excellent books. I really love them. I actually came to them a little later than Elon did, I think because I'd sort of grown up past the age where I was likely to read that. I, I, I'm trying to remember the year it came out. But anyway, I believe that I was like a senior in high school or into college or something like that. So I missed the window to read it when I was younger, didn't read it into my 20s. And so I was a little less influential for me. Certainly The Lord of the Rings, which is another one that he talks about, was a huge influence on me, as of course was the Foundation series by Isaac Asimov, so all of those were huge. Then Netanyahu talks about how a broad education and reading a lot is super, super important. So I asked him, Father, what is, you know, the most essential quality that you need to be the Prime Minister of Israel? And he said to me, well, what do you think? And I said, well, you have to have a vision and you have to have the resolve and flexibility to achieve it. And he said, well, you need that for anything. And I, I said, so what is the most essential thing? And he said, a word that surprised me. He said, education. You have to have a broad and deep education. Otherwise, you'll be at the mercy of your clerks. Otherwise, you won't navigate the course that you want to reach. You'll be navigated to the course they want to reach. And then finally, they turn to Elon Musk reading the encyclopedia. And I have to say, I have a lot of empathy for what he says here. Yeah, well, I think that generally would be good advice for you know, like kids or adults, frankly, is just to read more. Who reads today? Do yeah, people read? I know. Unfortunately, I think reading has taken somewhat of a hit. <laughs> That's because people read tweets. That's what they do. Well, I, they watch TikTok videos a lot, you know, which it's not you learn something, I suppose, but there's just, there's much less reading. And, and the things that I think if, if I'd had entertaining, if I'd had the internet back then with the great movies, video games, and that kind of thing, I probably would not have, I would have read much less than I did. I was, I kind of read the encyclopedia out of desperation because I didn't have anything else to read, you know. So obviously, as I'm a few years older than Elon, I too was in a situation where it was reading or bust. And I had a library that was only, gosh, it was a half a block away, maybe a quarter of a mile or something. My parents from the time I was very young just let me walk down there and do whatever I wanted to. So I would go and raid the shelves of the science fiction books, and I would read the encyclopedia. I would just go to the library and I would read it. I wasn't generally allowed to check out the encyclopedia, so I had to sit there and read the articles there. So I wasn't quite as complete as Elon was, but there was this sense of desperation. It was like, if you want to learn, you don't have the internet at your fingers. You go to the library, you get the encyclopedia, you get the science fiction books, and you just pour over those things, and that's how you learn. So I think my advice to young people is very similar to their advice, which is read more, get more knowledge. You can do it in different ways. It doesn't have to be reading anymore. I tend to listen to audiobooks now because it's more efficient while I'm doing other things. Certainly as a student, you can do that as well. You can also read, you can also watch YouTube videos. There's lots of ways to educate yourself, but try to do it on a broad base. It's really important to understand a lot of things, not just one thing, because those tend to integrate later in your life and you're able to utilize all all of that broad-based knowledge to help you understand things. And perhaps that's a good way to wrap up this episode is to think about us as broad-based knowledge to not be competitive with this AI singularity that's coming, but to be interesting to that AI singularity, as Musk says. He says, we should hopefully be interesting to it. We're more interesting than not having humans around. And the most interesting humans, hopefully, are ones that have a broad education and can hopefully have a decent conversation with an AI someday. So with luck, when we get to this AI singularity, we will hopefully come out the other side on the blessing end of it rather than the curse end of it. This was a really interesting conversation, as of course was the following roundtable conversation, so definitely stay tuned for that. All right, I hope you enjoyed this episode and found it fun and interesting and thought-provoking. If you did, please do like it so other people can find it, and of course consider subscribing for more of this kind of content. 
As always, a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon, my YouTube channel members, and of course, my ex-subscribers. Thank you all so much for supporting the channel in any way that you can. And of course, if you want to join any of the teams, just check out the links in the description. And if you're interested in a whole bunch of really cool merch, check out our merch store. Link is in the description. We have TeslaBot t-shirts, the Tesla meme t-shirt, success is a possible outcome, 4680 battery cells. All of that stuff is on t-shirts, mugs, tumblers, and on and on. So check it out. And finally, thanks once again to Incogni for sponsoring today's video. Be sure to check out my link in the description, get 60% off, and start protecting yourself from bad actors today. In the meantime, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.